Hello and welcome to Keswick Chapel The Chew. I'm Pastor Robert. This is day three of week 10 as we continue our journey in the way, his and ours. This week we're looking at compassion as the way of Jesus. And we are looking at Luke chapter 10 verses 25 through 37 as our foundational passage. I want to encourage you to grab your Bible and a pen and paper. Your Bible so you can look up the verses that we talk about and pen and paper so you can take some notes. Yesterday we looked at the way of Jesus is the way of compassion. And today we're going to be looking at the way of Jesus is the way of a neighbor. So as we looked at the Good Samaritan and his decision to do the right thing yesterday, I wonder did you notice when you look at this passage that there's no indication that he was concerned about the amount of time that he was investing into helping this man who had fallen into the hands of the robber. There, the Bible only indicates that he stopped what he was doing, that he took care of this man, he dressed his wounds and gave him wine, and then he took this man, put him on his transportation, carried him to an inn, got a room, got him up to the room, and took care of him overnight. Then the next morning he gets up, he has a conversation with the innkeeper and gives the innkeeper two pieces of silver in order to continue to care for this man until he's well and he's able to go on his own way. So all of this indicates that this man was more important to this Samaritan than his plans, his agenda, and his finances. He was more concerned about preserving the life of this man who had fallen into the hands of evil people. It's just that simple. And so this is what Jesus calls us to do. And so as we look at the way of Jesus is the way of a neighbor today, let's keep this in mind. This good Samaritan saw this man in the ditch, all but dead, and saw him as a neighbor, saw him as a friend, someone who needed assistance, and he was willing to do what it took. So we have this story, and the process that Jesus went through was based on the initial con conversation. The initial question from the expert in law was, how do I get to heaven? And Jesus threw the question back on him, well, you know, what does the Bible say you're supposed to do? You know, what does God's word say? He said, well, to love God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor is yourself. And Jesus said, well, you do that, and you'll have eternal life. And then the expert in the law was kind of flummoxed because he didn't get the answer he was looking for. He didn't get the, the way out that he was looking for. So he presses Jesus with, who's my neighbor? And then Jesus gives this parable about the Good Samaritan. And we talked about the reason for that. If you missed that, I want you to go back and watch that devotion from yesterday, that chew from yesterday. And so here we are. Jesus has answered the question. And then let's talk about the example of having compassion and considering everyone a neighbor or a friend. So I draw the inference to the neighbor and the friend because of the way Jesus interacts with people. In Mark chapter 1, verse 41, we read Jesus' response to a leper who wants to be cleansed of his skin disease. And the leper says, if you're willing. And verse 41 says that Jesus was filled with compassion. And he said to the man, I am willing, be clean. And then in Mark chapter 6, verse 34, Jesus sees a large crowd coming, and he has compassion on them. I want to encourage you to go read these passages and understand that Jesus saw everyone as valuable in the kingdom of God. And so he had compassion on them and did everything he could to meet their needs. So, Jesus is showing mercy. He's showing us who's a neighbor, how to behave with a neighbor, whether they, we actually know them or not. Jesus says that everyone is our neighbor, and we are to treat everyone as a neighbor. So when you look around, let me ask you this question. Are you accepting everyone as a neighbor? Do you see everyone as a potential neighbor? Jesus says that we're supposed to. Or are you someone who's a part of the we form no more crowd. Now, don't get me wrong. It's important to have a nucleus of friends, especially in the Christian faith, people that we can learn from and we can grow together with. 
That's not the question. The question is, are you willing to see those outside of your circle as valuable and important, not only to you, but to God, because they are critically important to God and critically important to Jesus. So here's the question for today. Are you willing to be known as someone who has compassion for your neighbors? Do you want to be known as someone who is more interested in doing the right thing than someone who is known for doing right? In Matthew chapter 25, verse 45, Jesus said this, Whatever you did to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Which way are you choosing? Are you choosing the way of Jesus? Are you choosing the way of yourself? Are you choosing the way of compassion? Are you choosing the way of a neighbor? Or are you choosing the way of the world? I pray that you'll have eyes to see and ears to hear God's truth today out of His Word. That you'll have a receptive heart and mind to receive these truths. And then the boldness of Christ, the courage of Christ, to do the things that He's asking you to do. So as you read these words, and as your life is being transformed by the renewing of your mind, I pray that as you chew on these things, that you will find strength in following the way of Jesus. Blessings to you, my friends. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.